Good morning, afternoon, evening, everybody. My name is Mike at Filmboy24, and today it's the long-awaited, well, I wanted to do it for a long time, ECN2 homebrew DIY movie film processing episode. That's right, today it's all about ECN2 processing. I've been kind of promising this for a long time and it, it's, a, it's a tough one because there's so much and so involved. I mean, the process itself is not difficult, but there's a lot of steps. So it's been sort of hit and miss on where to start, and where to end and well, anyway, here we are. I decided after pacing around for a couple of days to just sit down and go over what we gotta go over. This is all about ECN2 processing. It's not really about sending it to a lab and getting your film processed with the ECN2 process because that's real easy to do and it's the best way to process your film. This is about people like me that want to save some money but more so just love working with film yourself. It's all about, for me, getting your hands in there and actually processing the film yourself. It's just fun for me. It's what I like to do. So I figure now is the time to show you exactly what I do to make my own ECN2 kits and exactly the process that I use and the workflow that I use to go from a new box of Vision 3 film to a finished roll, processed and scanned. I say it in a lot of episodes, this is not to be a replacement for lab quality results. This is a homebrew recipe. It's not an ECN2 kit. So without too much more, let's delve right in. Now my desk is full of stuff and mainly it's the chemicals that you need to, the bare minimum chemicals, powdered chemicals that you're gonna need to get started with ECN2. Now ECN2 is a color negative process. It's primarily used on all of the Vision stocks, all the way back to Vision 1, or just Vision. Um, you can use it on some Fuji stocks as well. It's, like I say, a negative process, so you can't project it. It's nothing like the E6 process, which is a color reversal or color positive process, which you can project those. Use those on like your 100D and, and anything for E6 processing, which gives you a color positive. So if you're like me, after you spent the $30 for your roll of film, if you buy it direct from Kodak, now you got to send it for processing and scanning and it gets really expensive from there. You can, and I've done it, you can buy the Cinestill 2 bath process ECN2 kits and I'm a big fan of those kits. They're, they work absolutely wonderfully. Or you can do what I do and that is to to purchase bulk chemicals and make your own kits. Now, give me one second. Inside this Mylar bag is a Filmboy 24 processing kit for ECN2. And if I could ever get it open, I would show it to you. This is just an old bag that I had gotten from another kit that I bought. I just reused it. This is a Filmboy 24 ECN2 developing kit. You see on the back, in the back of it here, it's little baggies full of just the right amount of each chemical and labeled. Now we're going to get more into this in a couple of minutes when I go in there and actually start mixing all these chemicals together and processing a roll of film. My kits, well, let's start with Cinestill, an absolutely wonderful kit. I have nothing bad to say about those Cinestill 2 bath kits. Like I say, I've used them. I think I still have one in my kitchen in there underneath. They're 30 bucks for a one liter kit. Um, this is a two liter kit that I put together and it also includes the Rimjet bath. This is just a little under $7 for me to produce. Now, that also includes the stop bath, which is not inside this kit, and the photo flow, which is also not inside this kit. Those two are, whoa, settle down. Those two are actually optional, and I'll tell you what I mean by that in just a second. But we'll get into this kit in just a couple of minutes. Now, like I say, when you send your film to a lab, they're under pretty strict guidelines and standards that they have to follow, uh, pH standards that has to be to a certain level. 
They have replenishers that they constantly recycle and refresh the chemicals to keep them very stable and at the same level. That's not what we do here. I'll make up a batch and I'll use it for a couple months or about six rolls of film, whichever comes first. Maybe I drag it out to eight rolls of film. If it's Super 8, I probably get about eight. If it's 16 millimeter, maybe six. I really push my chemicals. Um, luckily, Vision stocks have tons and tons and tons of latitude. So if it's a little bit under or a little bit over, it's really not a big deal. That stock was meant to be scanned and then color corrected and fixed up any way you like it anyway. So you do have a lot of leeway here. If this isn't perfect for you, you probably can make it close in post-production. Anyway, here are the chemicals that you need uh, to get started. You need sodium sulfite, you need potassium bromide, you need potassium ferrocyanide, you will need, not a close pen, well you might, some sodium carbonate, some sodium bicarbonate, and lastly, some CD3. Now, these are all readily available in the US. I'm not positive where you live, so you may have to do a little more digging. I get all of my stuff from Walmart, Amazon, and Artcraft Supply, Artcraft Chemical Supply. Uh, that's where I get everything. The sodium carbonate and sodium bicarbonate, do I have that backwards? No. Uh, this is simply washing soda, and this is baking soda. Both of these can be purchased in bulk, big boxes at Walmart, or probably any of those discount department stores. Um, and then most of everything else, I, I could get everything, I think, on Artcraft, but, but you might want to look around, because sometimes it's cheaper here, sometimes it's cheaper there. Depending on the size, you want to pay close attention to the size. Do your math, and you can get it relatively inexpensive. And I messed up a little bit on my math earlier. I said it's just under $7 for a two liter kit. It's just under $7 for a one liter kit. So double that for two liters. And I only make two liter kits because I process a lot of 16 millimeter film. If I'm gonna do a roll of Super 8 that only requires one liter, I just use half of it. I warm the whole two liters, pour it in my uh, handy dandy dollar store pitcher, and I use this one liter of it. Now the basic stuff that you're gonna need, you may already have. You need a mixing utensil, dollar store, I think it's two for a dollar. You need a pitcher of some kind. This is a two liter pitcher and I just made some marks on it. Just, it's already on there, but I just made some marks on it with a Sharpie so I can see it better because it's getting up there. Um, you will need something to scoop your chemicals out with. I bought this little dollar store uh, a little scooper here. And by the way, you never want to use any of these things after you've used it with this. Don't be dummy. Don't use it for your food. Value your health a little more than that. And you'll need one of these little uh, scales. We won't call this what some people call it. It's just a normal little scale that measures uh, to the 100th, I believe, uh, in grams, ounces, pounds but you really need the grams, a little scale. They're, they're cheap all over the internet. Uh, and then you'll need some kind of a thermometer to kind of keep your temps where they need to be. Now, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go in the kitchen. We're gonna take this picture right here and we're gonna actually make up a two liter batch of ECN2 chemicals. And when we're done, we'll be right back. Somewhere in the 100 degree range, that's 99.1. We're gonna call that close enough. And uh, Celsius, that would be around 37.3 degrees. Open up our kit. This will be our developer. Pour out the contents. Developer, developer. So we're going to start with developer number one. Sodium sulfite. You want to mix constantly. Put that in there. Get to your potassium bromide here, which is number two. Make sure it's for your developer because your bleach uses potassium bromide as well, but you can see the difference. And again, you want to continuously stir as you pour it in. In there empty 
sodium carbonate, step three. Now the sodium carbonate really wants to clump up when you mix. So this one you really do have to pay attention and constantly stir. Takes a little bit longer to fully dissolve than anything else. Okay, once that's dissolved, you wanna get into your sodium bicarbonate. Get that in there while you're stirring. You get it all out of there. And last, we're going to mix in our CD3. Make sure you get it all in there. Now you just want to mix, mix, mix. Really, you should stir, mix for five or 10 minutes to make sure everything is well dissolved and well incorporated. But that's it, that's your developer. Now for a two liter batch, I started with about 1.75 liters of hot water. Now I'm gonna to top it off to make it a full two liters. Okay, once I got it to the two liter mark where I want it, give it another good stir. And I'm gonna introduce Mr. Funnel. I don't know if you can see it. Take my data tainer, my Delta One data tainer. Now this is a half gallon container and it's black and completely light proof, which is what you want for this kind of stuff. Put my funnel in here, go with it. And that's it, that's our two full liters of ECN2 developer. And what you wanna do now is put this directly into, if you're gonna process now, you wanna put this directly into your warm water bath. Okay, it's time for the bleach. We're gonna start with about 1.75 liters of warm water around 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna to go to step one, as you can see it's labeled here, potassium ferrocyanide, 80 grams. We're gonna mix, let me get my mixer. Okay, got my spoon, my mixing spoon, got my ferrocyanide, and we're gonna slowly and carefully add this into the warm water. Nice and orange. Get it all out of there and mix, 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 mix. Now I save these bags because I'm gonna refill them. If they get a hole in them or they get bad, I replace it, but these are in good shape. So just mix that for 30 seconds to a minute, get it really well incorporated. And then we're gonna move on to our potassium bromide, 64 grams. And this is the, the second and only step in the bleach process. Okay, now that that's mixed, let's put our potassium bromide in. Get it all out of there, mix it up. And again, we're gonna mix for five or 10 minutes to really make sure it gets well, well incorporated. Once you got it well mixed, we're gonna to top it off to make it a full two liters. Once you got your two liters measured out, you get your container, your two liter container or your half gallon container or gallon, you could use either. Get your funnel, make sure your funnel is rinsed from your developer. And voila, bleach is finished. Cap it off, put it in your hot water bath, and we'll move on to the rim jet. All right, everything's been well rinsed. Pitcher filled back up with about 1.75 liters of water, warm water, about 100 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in that range. You could get it all the way up to 106 if you wanted to use it straight away or you know somewhere around there, but keep it around 100 degrees, seems like a good working temp. 
Now you got your, your, your Rimjet mix here, sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate. You definitely want to continuously mix while you're adding these uh, powders because they will clump up on you. Get it all in there and just mix. Now this one's gonna take a while, especially the sodium carbonate. It takes a while for it to really dissolve the washing soda. The granules are really big. They're like sand. They're not real fine. So you want this to almost, it can almost get to like a clear consistency by the time you're ready to use it. And this, this one isn't quite as temperature crazy as the, uh, well, as the developer. You can use this anywhere, you know, 90 to 106 degrees Fahrenheit would be fine. So we'll just get this mixed up. All right, I did top it off with water. It has been, uh, been a couple minutes. I've been mixing it, but it still probably needs to go. The longer it sits also, the more dissolved everything gets and you'll start seeing more, it'll get more clear, less cloudy and milky. Now the fixer step, I know you're probably wondering, or maybe I mentioned it earlier, I don't remember. I just use regular Kodak powder fixer. I make it in one gallon batches and I usually always have it already mixed. So there's no need to, it's the same fixer I use for black and white. So no need to go through that step. Everyone has fixer on hand usually. All right, we're gonna let this sit and let's get to processing. Now that wasn't too difficult, was it? Well, it wasn't for you because you didn't actually do it, but it wasn't difficult for me. And like I say, I just use these, these little Delta data tainers. This is a half gallon. They, they come in half gallon and one gallon. They also make uh, just one liter ones, little brown bottles, plastic bottles. Let me tell you the importance of keeping this particular chemical mix in a dark bottle. I was getting the Cinestill kits and still making my own kits and I was using, I would use it and then a week later I would go and use it again. And I did it on two rolls of film that I had shot, I think it was 50D, Super 8, and they were really cool. There were some good shots. I mean, I had a hawk in a tree and it was getting attacked by a mockingbird, you know, some really goofy things. And I processed it a week, about a week later and then the film came out completely clear. So my initial thought was, wow, did I really blow that out filming it? So I took another roll, processed it like a bozo in the same chemicals, completely clear again. So what I, soon realized was it really needs to be in dark containers because when it's exposed to light, I don't know what that meant, but it's gonna go bad very, very quickly. And when it exhausts and you knock a camera down like that, it's gonna really just destroy your film. So ever since I started storing everything in these dark bottles, I mean, I'm getting three months out of it and six to eight rolls of film. So it's, it's working out fine now. I initially thought it was a Cinestill problem. It's not, it was a storage problem. So expect to, you know, keep it no more than about three months. But I always like to test it too. If I only process one or two rolls of film with this stuff and I wait a couple months, I'll take a small strip and put it in my Patterson tank and I'll, you know, I'll try it to make sure I'm gonna get something out of it first. Okay, now with that, film goes in here. Now, as of this, taping right now, I've already processed this film. I'm gonna show it to you in just a second, exactly what I do. But I put this roll of film in this contraption. This is called a Lomo tank. Uh, it's a UPB1A and it's got two layers there. You can use one layer or two layers. Uh, it, it'll process up to 100 feet of film in two 50 foot lengths. Now I just did one roll here uh, so you don't use the centerpiece. If you're interested in learning exactly how to load this tank, because I'm not gonna go through that, I've done it already, I'll put a link to that video up here somewhere so you can learn, really. Um, so the most critical temperature is your developer or first developer, which is just your developer. Needs to be, when you're doing it, like in one of these tanks, about 106 degrees Fahrenheit. Not about, it needs to be 106 degrees Fahrenheit. The other chemicals, the bleach and your fixer, 100 to 106 is fine, not quite as temperature sensitive, but you really wanna make sure and keep your developer where it needs to be. Now, as it relates to the stop bath, for my stop bath, I, you can use one ounce of vinegar to seven ounces of water. 
So a one to seven ratio, um, just plain white vinegar, and it sort of stops the developer. About half the time I'll use it. Vinegar's really cheap. Um, for this particular process, I did not use it. I just used water, and a lot of times I will just use warm water to stop. I'll wash it good for a couple minutes. Uh, that'll be my stop bath. You can also use photo flow at the end as a last step that it sort of uh, washes, stabilizes the film. And it also helps eliminate water spots when your film is drying, especially when you mix the photo flow with distilled water, which is exactly what I do. Now, what I didn't mention when I was mixing the chemicals, it's probably a good idea to use distilled water in all of your chemical mixes. I typically don't because I got to buy all this distilled water, even though it's cheap enough, it's fine. But I don't. I just use tap water. But I do my final photo flow mix, rinse, wash in distilled water and photo flow. If you don't want to buy photo flow, you can use a few drops of regular dish soap like Dawn or whatever dish soap you have on hand. And it does essentially the same thing. Probably most importantly, distilled water. Now, last thing before I show you the video on actually using this, this film right here, I put it in my little Canon 514XL here. Uh, I took it to Sugar Mill Gardens, which is in my city, with my youngest daughter, and we just ran around the, the little, uh, it's a little historic sort of place. It used to be called Bongo Land many, many years ago. Uh, but at Sugar Mill Gardens, they used to, in the 1800s, they produced sugar there. I think it was actually even prior to that. I should know these things. Anyway, there's a little bit out of focus here and there. It's not perfect, but let's go process the film, and then we'll be right back with you. Well, as you can see, we got everything cooking over here on the right side. Now, I'm going to be honest, it's a little tricky. I got the camera right there. So it's a little tricky getting my arms and stuff in here, but I think we'll be okay. Now, one little goof I did make is I, I actually made two liters of my Remjet removal bath when I... It's because I was making two liters of everything. And I only need one liter because I'm using my small Lomo tank. So, the first thing we're going to do is I have my warm warm rimjet bath. We're going to take off my little light seal here and I'm going to pour it into my preloaded tank. And this is the first, this should be your first step on any film that you develop that has rimjet on it. Quickly replace my little uh, doodad there and just want to maybe agitate it a little bit. It's more important that this rimjet bath just really coats your film the agitation comes after you put your, your next bath in, which is plain water. While I let that soak for a minute, I'm going to just put some warm water back in my pitcher, rinse it out a little bit, put some warm water in it, because this will be my second bath. You're going to see the Remjet really come off once you do the water. Not really, this first drain, you shouldn't see too much. It'll just be a little bit tinted, probably. Probably. Maybe no two Ren Jets are the same. So we want to put some warm water. I'm not going to make it scalding hot, but I'm going to make it warmish. Probably about 100 degrees. And then let's get this. 30 seconds to a minute. That's about how long I leave this in now. I'm going to go about a liter, 1.2 liters. And that's about good. Right there. Give it a couple of good jiggles. Drain. You should be able to see the um, water drain. You can see it's clear. They're a little bit tinted pink. See, I told you it was going to be tinted. I hope you can see the color. Like I say, this is a little tricky to do when I got the camera right there. So there's going to be times when I'm kind of probably blocking the camera view. There's the pink. Well, let's just get that all out of there. And then I'm going to hit the camera from time to time as well. Usually it doesn't take this long to drain. Uh, it's because I'm in such a weird position here. So let me fasten my hose back up there. Now let's put the water in. And with this bath, it's warm water. You're going to want to keep this in here and agitate constant for at least two to three minutes. You could go longer, but you want to go up and down. You don't want to do a lot of twisting because that's how your film kind of jumps the uh, 
the spirals in there. But you just give it some really, you know, halfway aggressive movement here. You can go up and down, left and right, up and down, side to side. And we'll do that for a couple minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, that's been about three minutes of steady agitation. So let's take a look. And you want it to be black, just like that. That's Rimjet, kids. I'm going to get all that out of there. Now, that was my first plain water rinse, and I typically am going to go with three rinses because you really want to get as much of that out of there as you can on this first step. Really important to get that rim jet out of there. So I'm going to go another couple minutes of doing the same thing and then your last rinse you can really just do for a minute or so and I'll be right back. All right we've been another couple minutes. Let's drain it. Now we're tinted. It's not real black but it's tinted. I think you can see it. There it is. And you kind of want to learn your tank, kind of where to shake it and how to get most all of the water out of there because you don't want a whole lot of standing water in there when you start using your, your de developing chemicals. So let's give it one more rinse. I'm not going to make you sit through this. We'll give it one more rinse and then we'll get into processing. All right, that's been about a minute. We'll do a final rinse drain. And you can see for the most part, the water is clear tiny bit tinted still got that pink tint to it or that magenta tint but not as bad so let's get all this water out okay water out we have our developer that's been soaking in that's been that's been uh that's been warming up now this is two liters so what i typically do is once it's up to temperature i'm going to fill it to the one liter mark here because I don't know exactly. I could put two liters in here. That pretty much caps it off, but I'd rather know exactly what's in there. So I'm gonna fill this with, I'll go a little over, you know, I'll go 1.2 liters, something like that. And we're gonna set our timer. I have a little timer up here. I'm gonna, uh, reset it. We're going to set our timer to three minutes because that's what we want for developing. Now this is, I just checked it, it's 106 degrees Fahrenheit, which is where you want it to be. So we'll go in and as I'm pouring, I just hit my timer. Get that in, put my cover on, and instantly you just want to start agitating. Took about 15 seconds to get that in there. So I'm going to agitate to the 15 second mark, so another 15 seconds. And then I'm going to go about 5 seconds every 30 seconds with my agitating. So as you can see, boom, I'm going to stop. We're at 2.5 minutes. So when it gets to 2 minutes, I'll go for 5 seconds. Minute and a half, 5 seconds, and then we'll be done. Okay, I agitated every 30 seconds, and as you can see, we're at the 30 second mark, so we'll give it some back and forth, a little up and down for about five seconds. And then when that hits, when that hits zero, we're gonna drain right back into the bottle. And we're gonna pull our other chemicals, because they're up to temp, and it doesn't matter if they drop a little bit. So let's pull these so that we can move this over a little bit. So, and here goes our timer. Let's get this. Get it out of the way. There we go. And we want to, probably should have been draining already, but you can see there it is, filling it back into our bottle. And we're good. And what you didn't see was I had refilled my pitcher. I rinsed it out real good, refilled it. Now, I'm not using 
my vinegar stop bath. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I decided to forego the vinegar this time around. And a lot of times I'll just use warm water as a stop, sort of a wash stop step in between. And that's all I'm doing right now. So film has been developed. Let's let that stop for about a minute, get it good and washed, and I'll be right back. Okay, wash is good. Let's drain it. Nice and clear, that's what you want. Now, while that was uh, sort of doing its thing and stopping the developing and washing, I was filling my pitcher back up. I had rinsed it and filled the pitcher up to about 1.2 liters of my bleach solution. All right, when you're confident you have most of the water out, and I think I do, we are ready for six minutes of bleaching at somewhere between 100 and 106 degrees Fahrenheit. So when we're ready, we're gonna start the timer. We're gonna pour in our homebrew bleach. Put the top on, do my agitation. Like I say, it took me to about that. Do my agitation until it gets to 530. Then I'm gonna rinse my pitcher. I'm gonna scoot this over a little bit. Rinse my pitcher, fill it up with my stop bath, which is hot water. There we go. I'm gonna fill the pitcher up. We'll be back when this is just about done. All right, we're a little under a minute to go, about 35 seconds. I don't know why I'm agitating. Sometimes I get, you know, lost in my own head and I just agitate. Maybe because I like to agitate. At least that's what my wife says. One thing I forgot to mention, I do use a, I don't think it's really in the picture right now, but let me see if I can bring it in. I use this sous vide device. Whoop, hit the camera again. You can see I got it set to 106. And it just keeps the water at a constant temp for the most part. And we're just about at our timer. Let's get our bottle right here ready to go. Now you can't really, I guess you could over bleach, but it's not as critical really. There's my timer. As your developer, so let's get this bleach put back in the bottle. There it is. How beautiful is that? Okay, got the bleach out of there. And before I do anything, I always get the stop in there as quickly as possible. Because you really want to get that process stopped as soon as you can. And once your uh, water or your stop bath is in there, you're good to go. Now I can finish. I can cap this off. I can refill my pitcher if I want to. I can dance. You know, there's a lot of things you can do right now in the interim. I can clean all this mess off my counter. So I'm filling the pitcher up. And I'm going to go about a minute, two minutes, with this plain water. Now I will preface, and I'm going to tell you, I'm not really prefacing because I'm in the middle of it, but... Uh, I did have a tiny bit of trouble loading this tank, so I'm hoping when we open it that there isn't too many overlaps. I had to pull it a couple times once I got, probably got about 15 feet into the reel, and it was kind of just winding around itself, so I had a couple of issues loading the tank. I feel like it went all the way to the end this time, but we'll see once we get to that point. Okay, I got my, uh, I don't know why I filled that pitcher with water because I gotta fill it with fixer. Now I have my two liters of fixer here and I'm gonna put about 1.2 liters in my pitcher. Boy, if you've never smelled fixer before, it is not pleasant. Also wanna mention when you're done with this, if you care about your family and or your life at all, Wipe everything down really good with some good disinfectant wipes. <laughs> I have to do that every time I'm done processing film because it's just one of those things, you know, you just really need to be careful with this stuff. Okay, so I'm probably gonna rinse that again. I was more tinted than I like, so I probably had a bit of bleach still left in there. I'm gonna give it one more rinse only because that was so uh, tinted. I just want to make sure all of that bleach is out of there. 
before we put the fixer in. So I'm just going to run a little bit of water in there and give it one more, you know, it's nice and clear. My wife always tells me my favorite color is clear. <laughs> now all of your chemicals are made with water. So if a little bit of fresh water gets in them, I mean, it's going to dilute them, but they are made with water. So it's not really going to hurt them. It's just going to dilute them a little bit. You, you, you don't keep them forever anyway. So, all right, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to fix and we're going to fix for five minutes. So I got my timer set and I'm going to start my fixer and hit my timer. And hopefully we can get it all in there within 15 seconds. And boom, 10 seconds, nice. So we'll go and agitate for, I don't know, 10 seconds. And we'll just let it go. And you can see I set my timer. There's where we're at. I'll see you when we're down to zero. Okay, we are coming up on about 30 seconds to go. And while we are waiting, I just want to remind everybody that just remember, this is home processing. This is not sending it to a lab. This is not Pro 8 millimeter. This is Pro Film Boy 24 millimeter. And you're not going to get professional, you know, FPP or CineLab or Pro 8 results when you do everything yourself at home. But it's fun and it's exciting and it's joyous. So now we're counting her down and we are at four, three, two, one. Now you can't really overfix, similar to the bleach, but more so even with the fix. You can't really overfix. In fact, sometimes I'll go to seven minutes, but for the most part, five is good. This is brand new fixer, so we're gonna be fine. So we're gonna go ahead and dump this. Now I didn't fill my pitcher again with fresh water, simply because now I'm just gonna take the lid off and just blast it with water and wash the heck out of it. So, okay, got the fixer out. Uh, let's get the water started. You settle down. And let's get the lid right on the fixer and get it out of there. Now this is the part where you don't really have to use hot water anymore. In fact, I can undo this. Let's get this hot water out of the sink. We don't need our, we don't need our bath anymore. I'm gonna take the tape off the sides of my tank. Now I didn't really talk about this little guy. I talk about it in a lot of videos. This is simply a piece of closed cell foam, just little, like maybe one or two millimeters thick. And it's cut into a circle. It's just a little insurance policy for me. I keep it on there sometimes. It just maybe helps a little bit with the light. I don't know, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Let me unplug my 2V so we don't have a, uh, you know, fire. Okay, fill it up. Completely full. Let's open it up right here. Keep them crossed. Let me put this in front so we can see it. Ta-da! Well, we stayed spiraled up nicely. I don't know if you can really see that, but it's not really overlapping anywhere. I'm good with that. Now, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times, oh, I did get a little crunch here in the middle. Something happened here in the middle. It got unseated or something. That's all right. It shouldn't affect too much. I don't know how that happened. Can you see that? Look at that little mess there in the middle. Right there. See that? Anyway, sometimes, this happens a lot with the old Ektachrome films, but sometimes you can take your finger and swipe the inside of the lid here and it's black. <laughs> this one, it didn't do it. That happens because a lot of times the, uh, the rim jet comes out th throughout all of the cycles in a lot of cases. It doesn't come off at the beginning like this new vision stock does. Most of the rim jet came off on this, which is a really good thing. So let's put this over here. Now basically all we're going to do now is I'm going to run fresh water through it. And I'm going to do that about five different times to get it really good and rinsed. So in other words, I'm going to drain it. Just let the hose hang down. I'm going to drain it, and then I'm going to fill it up again. And we're going to do it about five times. Really good, good and agitated. And let the uh, fresh water really wash it off. Now here's the pieces of tape. I put gaffer's tape 
six pieces. Every two splines, I put a piece of gaffer's tape in the dark when I load my tank. And I, you don't want to pull down on it. You don't want to pinch this down because then you're going to crinkle your film. You just want to make it so this doesn't open up on you inside your tank and overlap your film. So now is a good time to take this off and throw it away. We hook this back up. I'm going to do this about five times and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, so I'm draining now. This is the fifth cycle of water that I put in. I filled, agitated, let it sit, agitated, let it sit. About fifth, this is the fifth time. So, and it was probably seven, eight minutes total. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, now what we have to do is we have to get the rest of the leftover rim jet off of this film. So I'm gonna show you how I do that, but I'm gonna move the camera. I'm gonna turn it off and move it and I'll be right back. Okay, so as you can see, I now have a mounted rewind. It's mounted right to the corner of my, my countertop there next to the sink. And I have my film here on my grate. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unscrew the top cap, and I have two, one here and one here, two Super 8 reels, 50 foot reels, that I have in the water there. I'm gonna get a little towel. I'm gonna set one of my little towels there. So I'm gonna take this top layer off, set it to the side. I'm gonna re-thread this back in. I'm gonna move my grate over to the side, and I'm not sure if you can see that now, but here it is. It's just setting on the, uh, on the edge of my little shelf grate here, and I'm gonna pull the end of the film here, get my sink going with a little bit of cold water coming out, and I'm gonna start with my hands, just like this, just with my fingers, and I'm gonna pull off any remaining rim jet. And I'm gonna thread it onto one of my reels here with my rewind. See there, look at that. Tighten it up a little bit, and then I unspool as I go right into the sink here, just like this. Unspool a little bit, you don't wanna do it all. Unspool a bit. Take and you want to pull between your fingers just to get any remaining rim jet. And as you can see, you will you will get some. You don't want that on your film. That's yuck jet. So I'll do that a couple times. I'll go across it. With this new stock, Vision stock, the rim jet comes off really, really, really easy. With old stuff like Kodachrome and the old Ektachrome, you got to do this a bit. But then I just kind of squeegee it between my hands here until nothing comes off. So I'm gonna do this and I'll be right back and I'll show you the final step, the photo flow. Okay, that's the last of it. I got all the rim jet off. We have it wound onto our 50 foot reel. And by the way, there are images. Can you see those images? Probably not, but you'll see them soon enough. So we do have images. And now what we wanna do is we wanna take, and I just use this little 250 milliliter uh, dollar store measuring cup, plastic, and I take some Kodak Photo Flow. You could use dish soap if you don't have Photo Flow. Works just as well for the most part. And I just add a few you know, little zhuzh, some drops. That's good. And then where I live, we have really hard water. It's got a lot of minerals and all that goofy stuff in it. So I just take distilled water and I pour distilled water in here. Now I have distilled water mixed with photo flow. Now there is a measurement you can use for photo flow. I don't usually do it, but if you really want to get technical, it's listed on the bottle. I can't remember what it is, a certain milliliter to, to another milliliter. So anyway, this is what I do. I really get it just. Now I know it's not getting inside the film that's touching, but it will when it comes off, you'll see. Then I just kind of let it sit just like this and I'll let it sit and pour it all over my floor, but I'll let it sit for a minute or two. And then that's what the other reel is for. We want to get it nice and dry and has a little bit of water on it. We don't want any of my nasty city water on it. So we'll get it nice and dry. We'll get it set up on the rewind 
and then I'll be right back in about two minutes and we're going to wind it up and get it ready to dry. Okay, so I kind of moved the camera a little bit so you could see a little bit better. I'm telling you, it's just really hard for me to get, <laughs> to get in here and get in front of the camera and not block everything. But at this point, I usually leave the grate all the way over on the other side and just use the bottom of the sink. But I'm going to leave the grate up here or my little shelf system. This is just one of those uh, closet made cut to about 12 inches uh, shelving unit thingies here. It works good because water goes right through it. So you want to put your, you don't have to use a rewind, by the way, if you don't have them. It's not a big deal. Just for me, it's a little bit easier. But I'll take the end and slowly just kind of pull into the film. Kind of keep my hands dry. I do have a towel hanging over my shoulder. And then you just thread it on. And then I usually go forefinger like that just to get as much of it as I can and go nice and slow. And as you can see over here, it's the film is actually, as it comes off, it's hitting that distilled water. Move it a little closer, maybe you can see it better. See there? And I'm squeegee in it as I go, and I just hit that spot right here in the film where it got kind of buckled in the tank. So it's not a big deal. So we do this through the entire 50 feet. You can see it dripping off my hands here. Now I use distilled water because it doesn't have its, its, there's no minerals in it. It's just plain, it's basically steam is what distilled water is. So, and you use photo flow in distilled water and it really cuts down on the amount of spots you get when your film is dry. If I weren't using this distilled water or this photo flow, it would be embarrassing at just how bad the film looks when you're done. I mean, it's just, it's hardly watchable. So we're almost done and there we are, we're at the end. Boom. And we got a lot of the water out of that, much as I could do. Um, you could use a little fine cloth, like a microfiber cloth or something like that, but I just use my hands. And that's it. This film is ready to go. We're gonna take it in the bathroom where I have a little hook drying system uh, and we'll get it dry. And that's it. The film's done. It's been dried. It's been scanned. I know you're dying to see what I got out of my homebrew ECN2 process. Now, some people will use C41 with this vision stock. Some people advocate for it. I'm not a fan of it. I've tried it. Just didn't come out right for me. I don't know. Call me crazy. Call me a film nut. I didn't like it. I think the color shifted. I think it was just kind of all over the place for me. So, you can use C41 on vision stock. You get decent results, but it's not what I like. I don't like, I like to use the native process for vision film and that's ECN2. Most of the time, your negatives are gonna be relatively thin. That's just part of the ECN2 process. Um, maybe that's part of the latitude of the film. So I'm gonna show you quickly, right out of the scanner, what I had to work with. And now, without too much more of what Mike does best, I'm gonna show you my final result. Here's my ECN2 process.
Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned a little something. I'm not an expert when it comes to this. Somebody can tell me, well, how do you raise the pH or how do you add the, the anti I Honestly, in reality, I don't know what all of the chemicals actually do to the film itself. I just know that they do. That's where I'm at right now. My workflow is ever, ever evolving. It's a big word for me. So bear with me as I take this journey. If you're new to my channel and you feel like I've earned it, how about do me a favor, see that? And subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. It helps this channel continue to grow. It helps me continue to grow as a filmmaker. But at the very least, if you really don't want to subscribe, how about tap the like button for me? That also helps this channel grow. It helps the algorithm and stuff like that. And the last thing that I would like to say to all of my beautiful people watching out there, I'll see all of your gorgeous faces on the very next go around.